Okay, we're live, we're live. Oh, hello friends. Welcome to Friday. It is a beautiful Friday and I'm super excited to be here with you today on our Friday live stream. So before I dive in, I just want to say hello and I hope that you are well. And let me just test a little bit. I need to bring, bring some sound over here to make sure we're nice and good and loud. And yeah, okay, so we're here. Hello, everyone. I am excited to be here. It's Friday. It's a beautiful day here in Maryland. We finally have some beautiful weather. It's supposed to be like 80 degrees today, and I'm so excited for it. Um, and I'm just really excited to be here and be with you and talk a little bit about my favorite watercolor mediums, pencils, all these different things we're going to chat about today. But first, I have a couple announcements and I want to say hello and I hope you are well. And if you're joining in on the replay, hello, hello, welcome. I have a really fun tutorial planned for today and we are going to just have some fun with it. Hello, Nancy. Hello, hello. Also to all of my local to Maryland friends that are joining us on the live stream today. One of our favorite, favorite stores is reopening tonight at five o'clock, Photo Scraps in Sykesville. So we're super, super excited for Tracy to be able to reopen as Maryland starts to reopen some stores on a limited basis and as we start to try to get back to it so i'm kind of i'm excited for tracy and i just kind of wanted to announce that for all of our maryland friends so okay so i'm gonna dive in hello everyone if you don't if this is your first time here i'm lisa hatrick from indigo jade art and i believe that one of the most wonderful things that you can do for yourself and your self-care is to create something with your hands and to craft your joy. So that's why I've decided that I'm going to be popping in on these Friday live streams and sharing a little bit of my tutorials with you. My superpower is teaching and I love to kind of just dive in and really help you learn a little bit more um, about watercolor and paper crafting. So super, super fun. Hello everyone. I could see people starting to pop in and it's very, very exciting. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so a couple announcements before we get started. I have a fun new class that I'm, go that I'm working on, an online class. It's probably going to launch either at the end of May or the very beginning of Jul June, <laughs> July, right? The very, very beginning of June, and it here are some samples of some things. It is, we're going to be doing, it's a wonky flutters class. So I'm going to teach you all about um, six really super fun techniques with watercolor. I call them your scatter your joy techniques. Love them. Something a little bit new, something I haven't covered in any of my other online classes in my on my online classroom at craftyourjoy.com. It's going to be a super fun class and there's more to come. So if you follow me in social or you're on my email list, you're going to be seeing a little bit more about this upcoming class that's coming. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Joanne. Hello, everyone that's popping in. Um, yeah, super excited. And one other thing about that class there's going to be a little something different. I said that there was going to be some scatter your joy techniques. Well, there's going to be a little bit of sewing on our watercolor projects in that class. So kind of fun, something new, something a little bit different. Okay, so moving on. Um, I also have a brand new card tutorial that's coming out next week. I'm not going to share a sneaky peeky of it because it's sort of a hot mess right now. But if you haven't seen my latest card tutorial, this was the card that I created. Super, super fun. It's on my YouTube channel. 
and that will also be linked up in the notes um, if you happen to catch this video on YouTube. If you catch it in the replay on my Facebook page, I'll have it linked there as well. And the other thing I wanted to announce is that if you're not on my email list, I do have today, I'm going to be sharing the Blooming with Joy note card freebie again. And if you've gotten that freebie and you're on my email list, yay, I'm excited, but I've got a brand new one that'll be coming out for all of my email subscribers, excuse me, in June. So my live streams for June will focus on that brand new illustration that I'm going to be sharing, that brand new coloring project. Um, that I'm going to be sharing. But if you aren't on my email list right now, it's super, super easy. You can take a look at the link that's in the description for our live today. And also I'm sharing my screen here with you. You can head on over to, um, let me just click on that, indigojadeart.com. I have a little button here that says subscribe. And when you hit that link, you can head on over and subscribe to get the Blooming with Joy note card project and a free art print download, which is super, super fun. So, okay. So who is ready for our tutorial today? I am super excited. Today, I'm talking all about, I've got three main techniques that I'm going to be sharing using watercolor pencils. So let's just head down to the project cam. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the watercolor pencils I have in my stash. I've got a little sampling of them and what they do and kind of my preferences. And then we're going to dive into the three techniques. So let's go ahead and head down to the project cam. All righty. So if you have any questions along the way, just pop them down into the comments and I will make sure that I answer them along the way. Okay, so here is that Blooming with Joy note card project that we've talked about. So if you're on my email list, you've gotten this in the mail, you've gotten this in your email or you've subscribed and you've gotten the automatic download. So this is a card front and there's two on the sheet. One is, uh, is darker and one is lighter, so you could do some no-line watercoloring. I'm going to be using them today to do a little bit of coloring, but first I'm going to start with the samples of the colored pencils that I have. So I'm going to bring all these into my screen here. So here are four sets of watercolor pencils that I have and that I um, use often. These are my super faves. These are the ones I use the most. These I use often, they're just about the same as these. And these are, this one's a brand new to me. Probably had these for about a year and haven't used them that much. And I also have a set of Prima watercolor pencils that are um, actually from Prima Marketing. So I'll talk a little bit about them. So I'm going to take a little bit of a deeper dive here into the watercolor pencil. So this is the Albrecht Durer line from Faber-Castell. I love, love, love these colored pencils. I, first of all, I've had these colored pencils for about almost 10 years. Okay. So I've had them for a really, really long time. I really, really enjoy using them mainly because I feel like they're, they're nice weight. They, um, sharpen really well and really easily. They don't break and they provide me with the largest pigment load of color. Nancy says she has these. Yes. I love these pencils. Just love them. So to kind of show uh, the four that I have here, here is the Albert Durer pencils. And I just love the distribution of the pigment that you can get with these pencils. It's just super, super smooth and super nice. I love it. So these are kind of my favorite um, pencils. I also have the Caran d'Ache. 
Alright, where are we? Where are we? I'm trying to find another blue that's similar. Here we go. I have these Caran d'Ache Supra Color Soft pencils. These are Swiss made. These are really, really nice. I think that I had picked these up around the same time that I picked up the Albert Durer pencils. And I just don't grab them as much. They are just as lovely and, and wonderful, but I just don't grab them as much as I do my Albert Durer pencils. So I just do love, love, love them. But look at that pigment load for that color as well, for the super color. It's really, really pretty intense, pretty intense. So, and that's the key. That's what we're looking for with our watercolor pencils. You can use your watercolor pencil in any technique that you would use for watercolors, but with our watercolor pencils, we are looking for a pencil that has, that can release quite a bit of pigment with water and not be like so super, super scratchy like some of our other um, less pigmented watercolor pencils. So I'm going to show this one. This is a Winsor Newton, which is more, I think like within the last year they came out with these. And I was intrigued, so I picked them up. I picked up a little set of them um, to give them a go. And I haven't grabbed them <laughs> as much as I thought I would because I tend to grab the Albert Durer pencils first. But I will share the Winsor Newton pencils are pretty affordable. The so are the Albert Durer pencils. They're very they're pretty affordable. You really don't need a huge set of them. They come in sets of 12 and 24 and 36 and beyond. But really a nice set of 12, even a nice set of 24 can get you take you a long long way. The Winsor Newton is, they're really, really nice. And I was intrigued because Winsor Newton is well known for their watercolor paints and they've been around forever. And I was kind of intrigued to see what the pigment load would be with the Winsor Newton pencils. And it's, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. So I feel like um, in comparison to the Albert Durer pencils, these are a little bit less pigment, but still a really, really nice um, pencil. Joanne just said, I have a couple sets, but don't remember which ones I have. Oh yeah, I know. That's, 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 uh, that's because we collect things, right? Joanne, we collect things and we don't remember. When I went to go pull all my stuff out, I was like, oh, oh yeah, I've got these and I haven't used them in a while. So here is a set of Primas and this is the earth tone set. And this is a, is a really nice set of earth tone colors. I don't find myself grabbing them that much because I tend to not use a lot of earth tone colors in my flower paintings. But this is a really, really nice set that I know I originally picked up for, um, for faces, for stamped images with faces. So really kind of enjoyed this set for that. One of the things I will say about the Prima pencil set is that the pigment load isn't as strong and it's a little harder to break those pigments, break that pigment down. So you can see I did the same technique with all four of these pencils, but you can see how smooth, how easily you can break down like the Albert Durer, the, the pigment in the pencil really broke down and blended really well. The super color, um, Karen Dosh didn't, didn't break down as well. I had to work it a little bit more. Same with Winsor Newton. So what happens is, and Prima as well, what happens is when we're using the 100% cotton paper, which is my ultra fave, right? It's got a tooth to it. So when we're using the watercolor pencils on this toothy like paper, the pigment wants to get caught in the paper. You can see how it's getting it's getting caught in the tooth of the paper. So with a nice watercolor pencil, you can really break that pigment down and get it to blend out. And that's the effect that I'm always looking for. So when I'm looking for a watercolor pencil, I'm looking for a pencil that will where the pigment will really break down well. Okay, so I am going to dive into the three techniques that I'm going to cover today. So, and I'm gonna grab, and we're gonna do them together. I'm gonna do them together so that I can show you. I am going to do this technique, what color is this? This is indigo. 
I want to do indigo. Let's pick a color. What color should I pick? Maybe we should do, this is matter. So this is like a red. So I am going to do, I've got this Faber-Castell um, sharpener. I'm just going to go ahead and sharpen it so that I can show you how nice and sharp I can get it really nice and sharp and it doesn't break so the pencil is not like breaking it's a very very weighty pencil love it so the three techniques i'm going to share today are direct to paper dry on wet which is more of a texture technique with watercolor pencils and painting direct to paper i'm going to turn the camera just a little bit and maybe drop it down just a smidge for us here to get a little closer to our technique here. Okay, so the direct to paper, the direct to paper technique is just exactly what it sounds. Now I have a water brush that I'm going to be using. You could use water and a um, a glass. You can use a glass of water and your favorite brush. I'm just going to go ahead and use a water brush today. Just get it activated just so that I can kind of keep things moving along. Okay, so for direct to paper, I'm going to take, um, I'm gonna take my pencil here and I'm just gonna color it down onto my paper. So uh, with a pencil, because we're very, very much used to writing and drawing, we feel like we have a lot of control with our pencils. When I'm doing this technique, I tend to come out to the edge of my pencil if I'm trying to get some color in a solid area. It also helps me, because I'm extremely heavy handed as a left hander, keeps me from doing this kind of thing and really scratching into the paper. I'm trying really, really hard to keep that color on the surface and not scratching into the paper. If I scratch into the paper, I'm going to create an indentation into that watercolor paper. And then that's where all the pigment is going to want to lay. And I don't want that. So I'm trying to be a little bit light handed. So direct to paper would be you're taking your watercolor pencil and you place it directly onto your paper and then you can blend it out. Now you can see the pigment. Oh, I just love these Aberdeur pencils. Look at how quickly that pigment disperses in this direct to paper. So if you're coloring up your stamped image and you have a, a nice watercolor pencil, or even like if you're using the Primas or using one of our craft color, craft pencils, just make sure you're using a lighter hand when you're adding your color direct to paper. And I'm going to show an example of that. And you'll be able to use just a little bit of water. You can see I'm not squeezing the, um, the water brush at all. I'm just kind of using that water to help break that pigment down and begin to use it as my watercolor. Oh, love it. Okay. So that's direct to paper. And now the next one I want to talk about is dry on wet. So I'm going to wet the paper and I've kind of squeezed my water brush a little bit here and my paper is wet and my pencil is dry and I'm going to take the pencil and color it into the wet area. Now, again, I'm doing this with not a super, super firm, heavy hand because I don't want to scratch into the paper. I just want to color into the wet. And I'm gonna be able to disperse some of that color, but not all of it. Because what's happened is the pigment is sitting on top of the tooth of the paper and it's giving us some texture. So I really like to do this dry on wet technique when I want some added texture. When I want that look and feel with that texture and those lines and that pigment that's sitting on the tooth of the paper. So that's what I'm going for when I'm doing dry on wet with watercolor pencils. 
Now the next one, the next technique, painting direct to paper, tends to be the go-to that I tend to do. Now I have this little, I don't know what this, this is a palette by Karen Dosh, but the palette has some tooth to it. So it enables me to take my colored pencil and just kind of scratch it down onto this toothy palette. And you can see I got a bunch of colors on here. Now, if you don't have this palette, no big deal. You can scratch it down onto some another piece of watercolor paper and you can lift it from there. But basically we're using this palette and we're painting direct to paper. So we're using our watercolor pencil because it is a brilliant, brilliant way. If you have watercolor pencils and you don't have any watercolors or pan set, you can use your watercolor pencils as your paint. And that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just watering it down. And then I'm going to be able to paint directly to my paper. And holy smokes, look how glorious that, look at the color. So, and you can see that this is more of a smoothie blend. We get more smooth effects when we paint, use this to paint. Look at that. Oh, love it. Sorry, I digressed there a little bit. So here was direct to paper, and then here was painting direct to paper. So painting and lifting it off. So yes, Joanne, oh, Joanne just said, that's what I do wrong. I was using the point and not the side. Yes, when you use the point, look how pointy that is, right? When you use the point, it is going to put scratches and indentations into your paper. If you use the side, you have a lot more control and you can see the side of my pencil. That's why I'm always, you know, always sharpening the pencils so that I can use the side. Joanne also asked, I bought a cheap cutting board with a bit of tooth to it. Yes, you could absolutely use that. That's essentially what this is and exactly what this feels like. I had just picked this up because it's super, it was pretty inexpensive. It's like around $10 or something. And um, it just kind of fit into this little container. But yes, you could use a cheap cutting board that has a little bit of tooth in it and you're you literally just scratching your color down onto it and lifting it up, applying some water to it and then lifting it up and using it as your paint. And I'm going to paint something. So I know I've showed these techniques, but I'm going to show them in action on one of the petals. Nancy just asked, did you ever, did you, excuse me, do you ever take the wet brush directly to the pencil to pick up the color? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. So I'm going to show that. You can do that. Um, I, Honestly, I tend to do this one, painting direct to paper. I tend to scratch it down, and then I feel like I'm building my own palette, and I might take a little bit of this color over here and mix it in with this, and it feels more like the flow of, way, of the way I work. But, for example, if you have one of those super, super small stamped images, and we all have them, right? And we're trying to get into the nook and cranny of something. You're going to make sure the tip of your brush is wet, and you can easily pick up that color and do the exact same thing. So you can paint direct to paper by lifting it right from the tip of your watercolor pencil. Love that. Now I want to show, like, let's pull out one of these Primas, see if we can do that, Nancy. Because sometimes I really do think it depends and let's grab this darker one. It really does depend on the level of pigment that is in your watercolor pencil. So I'm gonna go ahead, my brush is, the tip of my brush is wet. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna see how much I can lift off the tip of this piece. And you can see I've got some splatter going, so it's definitely giving me some color. That pigment load in, this, in these color pencils is a little less than it would it is in the Albrecht drawer, but that's still a really nice load of color. If I did that with the Primas, let me just scratch that down right there with the Primas as well. 
kind of made it into its own paint. And yes, you can still totally do that. So if you feel more comfortable, you know, pulling out your pencils, you could have a whole handful of your pencils here and be pulling color from the tip and painting your stamped image. And it would be brilliant. It would work well, brilliantly. Love that. Thank you, Nancy, for sharing that because I think that is a really great technique. Um, and I'm glad you mentioned it. Cool. Okay. So we have direct to paper, dry on wet, painting direct to paper. So you can do this two ways. The direct, the dry on wet for the texture effects, not one of my super favorites, but I have done it. And that's because you can see, look at that pigment and how it sits on top of that, of the tooth of the paper. If that's what you're going for, and you want to add a little bit of extra texture into your stamped image, then that's the way to do it. I tend to like these more blendy, smoothy kind of looks with my watercolor pencils. Okay, so I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in this, this, um, the download piece, the Blooming with Joy note card, and I'm using this one right here. And I'm going to show you, I've got a little sample right here too, as I was playing with petals with the three techniques. So I'm going to do three petals with the, one with the direct to paper, one with the dry on wet, and one with the painting direct to paper. So I'm going to take my watercolor pencil and Joanne, this might be really helpful. You're going to see me come in, we're going to work on this petal and I'm going to work top down. I'm not going to color in the whole pencil, the whole petal. And I'm not going to come in with my pencil and do this kind of um, vertical up and down scratching into the paper. When I do that, it's going to uh, damage the paper. So I'm coming out a little bit here and I'm using the side of the color and I'm just going to come around the top of the petal and I'm lightly adding this color in so it, it's just not an intense you don't need a lot of the watercolor pencil the pigment to really get the effect that you're looking for now when you are coloring on 100% cotton paper 100% cotton or or say you're using the Canson watercolor paper when you start to run your pencil over the paper, you can feel the tooth. You physically can feel the tooth of the paper in your hand. So it does help you go lighter because you can feel the tooth. So I've got, I've come into that petal really light and you can see that that pigment is sitting on the surface of the paper. So I'm going to go in with my brush and I'm going to start top down and I'm just going to start to, I'm not squeezing and I'm just pulling the color out and down around the petal. These, oh, there's so much pigment here. I love it. And I'm just pulling it down using what I have here and pulling it down to the center of the flower. There's a lot of pigment here. Oy, it's delicious. This color is beautiful. So you can see I'm moving it around and that was like direct to paper. I mean, I'm getting that nice watercolor look and feel that we enjoy using watercolor, with this, which is that variation of the value of color from light to dark by doing that direct to paper. Uh, and my hand was not heavy, but drawing that, coloring that in, again, you can feel the tooth of the paper on your hand, and it will kind of retrain your brain to go lighter. It's kind of cool. Anyway, so that's the way that looks. I'm digging it. You can see the fibers in the paper, and you can see where the pigment in the watercolor pencils are just sitting on top there. Ah, love it. I love that variation. We get that nice variation in color. We could even do some color mixing if we wanted to. Okay, now I'm going to just kind of flip 
over, flip this around a little bit, and I'm gonna grab this pet. I'm gonna grab this little petal, and I'm gonna do the dry on wet. So I'm going to just clean my brush. So if I'm using a water brush, I just want to make sure it's clean and there's no pigment on the brush. Or if you're using a regular brush, just make sure you're painting with water. So I'm going to paint some water into that petal. So this is nice and juicy and wet. And now I'm going to come in and again, I'm just kind of holding it out to the side a little bit. I'm going to come in and just start painting in. Oi, you can see that pigment just wants to go. It's digging in. You can even feel it. There's a difference. Uh, my hand is a lot lighter touch right now. Um, and you can feel the tooth of the paper. And I'm going to just blend out the rest of this right here. But it's sticking into the tooth. And it's giving me more, and it's harder to push out. Now, I could sit here and scrub and really push it out, but I'm not going to because I will end up, it'll end up looking not so great. But you can see right here with this dry on wet, I've got a lot more texture here. You can see that pigment is sitting on top of that wet paper and the fibers in the paper. No worries, Joanne. Joanne just said, so many questions for me. Did you print directly onto your watercolor paper from your printer? Yes, I did. I printed this image directly on my, for, on my, from my printer onto the watercolor paper. And I get this question a lot. Thank you, Joanne, for asking it on how to do it. Check your, the settings of your printer. I have an Epson. It's an Epson Artisan 1430. It's a big printer. It's the printer that I use to, to do all the prints in my shop, but it's also kind of my daily printer. So sometimes if with the feeding the paper through, the watercolor paper through, I make sure that my watercolor paper is the only piece of paper in the tray. And when it's feeding through, I tell it when I'm printing it out that it, it is a cardstock, the heavyweight cardstock. And I also, as it's feeding through, if this was our, the printer in the feed, I kind of put my finger on the top and just kind of push it through a little bit. And that helps give the printer, the wheels on the printer, just a little bit of extra grip to grab the paper. So that's kind of how I do it. Um, every printer is a little bit different, but that's kind of how I do it. So here is, so dry on wet, a little more texture. I'm kind of digging it. You know, if I did the whole flower that way, I'd have some really, really nice texture showing through um, for the project. So, okay. Now the third petal that I'm gonna do, we'll grab this petal right here. And I'm going to do the painting direct to paper. So I've got a lot of paint already on here. Let's do a little bit of this matter lake color down onto this little toothy toothy palette. Now my paper is dry. My brush is wet. I am getting this nice and juicy and wet to release the pigment so that I can paint with it. So essentially I'm painting with it like I would a watercolor pan set or some watercolor paint. So again, I would start at the top of my, ooh, look at that intense color. And I'm kind of going quickly because I, I just want to add a little bit of color from that top. I'm not going to paint the whole thing because I'm going to clean my brush here, let it go clean. And I'm going to use the paint that we already have here, the pigment, and I'm going to draw it down. I need to get that brush just a little bit more wet. I'm going to draw, oops, oopsie, went outside the lines there a little bit. I'm going to draw that down to the center of this petal. So this is more of what I would call a smoothie, smoothie way to color. So if you're really looking for smoother transitions from your top of your petal to the bottom or bottom to top or whatever it is 
in your that in your stamped image that you're painting you can we can compare these two petals direct to paper some of that pigment is just kind of sticking back isn't it it's just a little bit heavy up here now I could easily go in and blend that out a little bit more but it is a little bit different than this one super smooth you can see that variation of the value of this color from light to uh, from light to dark and I am really using what's here to just kind of paint now one of the really fun things about watercolor pencils is that they granulate so do you see some of these little tiny what they look like little flecks they granulate so some of that pigment is kind of granulating into our project so we do get some extra built-in texture super super texture right here this isn't one of my super faves right this dry on wet technique but i it has a place in our paper crafting arsenal you can imagine if you were painting say you were painting a bucket or you were painting a basket or something that had some built-in texture this would be a really great way I need to shut my window in my office so we're getting a little bit of our outdoor sounds of the beautiful day and that was a motorcycle that just went by so hello um, okay so you know this is a really great I, I feel like this has place but it's a really great texture based technique and it depends on what you are what your stamped image is and how you want to create some texture but to know that you can take a watercolor pencil and create three different ways of painting your stamped image is pretty cool. Getting a nice smoothie blend, getting a little bit more of a direct to paper, you get a little bit of texture there, and or doing the dry on wet and getting a lot of texture. Oopsie, forget what I just did. Getting a lot of texture there. Okay. I'm kind of getting nerdy and geeky, which happens when I start coloring, right? And start pushing our supplies a little bit further than we would normally push it. Now, one more thing I'm going to share is how we can add another layer of color on top. Last week, I showed how I like to take yellow and pop it on top as a finishing technique and it really just kind of jacks up the glow of the color. Now here is a yellow. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do, you know what? I'm going to do the Nancy technique. Nancy, we're going to call this the Nancy technique from now on. Taking the wet brush directly to the pencil. I just love it. Okay. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this yellow and you can see the pigment coming right off. I'm going to grab a little bit of this yellow. And then I'm going to go ahead and touch it into this petal a little bit and just kind of then clean my brush, get it nice and just wet again. <laughs> Nancy, I thought you would like that. And then I'm going to add this color. So you can see I don't need a lot of yellow to get to pop the glow of that petal. Just needed a tiny little bit from the tip of the watercolor pencil. So you can see why a set of watercolor pencils could last you your lifetime, right? Because you really, it really is an efficient way to you efficient way to use watercolor in your paper crafting projects. And you know that you have three different ways, four different ways to use the pencil. And I just love that. I just think that's that's just exciting when you can take a supply, you know you've made the investment, and you can find all of the different ways that you can push that supply even further. So going back to what Joanne said about the, the cutting board, the, the inexpensive cutting board that had tooth to it. So look at that. You, I've got all these different colors on here. This just becomes a palette. You could wash us off each time you're working on a project or, you know, when it dries, you can easily lift that color back up. You can reanimate it by just adding water. You could take it over here and mix it in with that. I'm going to take that red. 
mix it in with that blue that I have sitting over here and all of the sudden I now have a purple how cool is that oh just love that love it super cool love that idea okay so today direct to paper dry on wet painting direct to paper with our watercolor pencils again love 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 the abrac durer watercolor pencils these are a little bit these are considered artist grade artist quality watercolor pencils now faber castell there is also another version of watercolor pencils made by faber castell that's popular with paper crafters and i think they're very very much like the prima pencils these primas are nice um i just don't i only have the earth tones so i don't use them that much but again, it really depends on what you want. I've made the investment in these watercolor pencils, have had them forever, have used them in my paper crafting projects and in my uh, professional watercolor paintings and things. They're light fast, so I know that my card project isn't going to fade. These colors won't fade in the light. They last a really, really long time. So I really, really enjoy these watercolor pencils a lot. Now, you can use these watercolor pencils like we have today as your main watercolor medium, or you can use them on top of other things, other mediums that you might enjoy. So if you're, if you like to use your alcohol-based markers like Copic markers or Spectrum Noirs and all those wonderful markers, you can use your watercolor pencils on top of them and you know blend them out or n don't blend them out and they make a really nice mixed media effect with them you can also use your watercolor pencils as a colored pencil and that's one of the things that that's one of those demystifying kinds of things some people feel like i need my watercolor pencils and i need my color pencils but if you're making an investment and you only want to do one or the other, I always say go for the watercolor pencils first because you have more opportunity to break down the pigment and use them as a watercolor. Or you can use the watercolor pencil as a colored pencil and still do some of the same techniques you would with a water with a colored pencil like Gamsol and blending it out and things like that. So I feel like you get more bang for your artsy buck with trying out a watercolor pencil. So, all righty. Oh, so exciting sharing all these fun techniques today. We did a lot here. Direct the paper, dry on wet. And I've answered some questions along the way. So if you get, I, I can't wait to see what you do. Now, I know that many of us have watercolor pencils in our stash and we may not gravitate towards them or may not grab them or may not get them out but i hope today's tutorial just kind of inspires you to get them out and to play and to have some fun with it now merla just popped in with a question hey lisa loving the color the cutting board palette idea i happen to have one similar to that Joanne was wonderful and shared that idea with us today. And yes, I also have another one of those sitting in my crafty stash too. So yes, absolutely. Love the idea of using a toothy, toothy cutting board. And Joanne and Merla, if you give that a go with your watercolor pencils, Drop me a direct message or a Facebook message or whatever and let me know how it's how it works out because I'm definitely going to try to dig mine out and see um, what I can create with it because you've inspired me. So super, super fun. I hope you found today's tutorial um, inspiring and fun. And if you're not already a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe so that you can get that Blooming with Joy note card. I do have a brand new, new um, download coming out next month in June. If you're a subscriber with me, you already know I give a lot of freebies out and special offers during the month. And every month I try to change it up and give you something brand new. 
So thank you, Nancy. I'm so glad that you're that everyone who joined me today was finding this helpful. Again, I am all about trying to look at the supplies that we have and see how we can push them even further and all of the different kinds of techniques that we can do with them. And it's sort of my superpower, sort of my watercolor nerdy superpower to kind of go in and see how much more we can do with them. So, okay. So next week's live stream, I am going to do something that I think is pretty fun. And I can't wait to see, don't hesitate to let me know what you would like to see on the live streams. Because in the live streams, I am taking deeper dives into these techniques. I do that in my online classroom and I also do that on my YouTube channel. But I really enjoy doing this live and I feel like this interacting and answering questions in the moment is is really helpful. I hope you're finding it helpful. So next week, drum roll, just got a little nerdy. Next week, we're going to do some washi watercolor effects with Distress Oxides and watercolor paint, but we're going to do them with stencils. So I'm bringing out some stencils and I'm going to show you a couple different techniques to create these washi watercolor effects with your stencils and they become backgrounds for your stamped images for your card making projects. So I'm super excited to share that and I am looking forward to it. I have some fun stencils that I want to play with and I have some really fun techniques and the distress oxides was something that people have been asking and I really want to show you how I push them to their max and try to create these washy, washy watercolor effects. So I'm super excited. And that will be next Friday. The, um, gosh, I've lost the, what day it's going to be. Today's the 15th. Next Friday at 1130 EST right here on this channel. Also, if you're watching this on the replay on my Facebook page, hello and welcome. And this live stream will also be uploaded to my YouTube channel. So it will be there as well. And you can go in and watch and stop and do all the things if you're trying to follow along with this technique. So thanks so much everyone for joining me today. I am so grateful, so, so grateful that you're joining me. So grateful to see the sun here in Maryland today. And so grateful to know that you are all well. So be well, take good care of yourself, and craft your joy.